Today we'll present a recent work of text to live text-driven layered image and video editing. And what we focused on is editing real-world images and videos using text. More specifically, we focused on localized semantic edits of existing objects in the scene. So just to show an example, given this image of the cake in a text that describes the desired edit, in this case, Oreo cake, we want to modify the cake in a semantically meaningful manner while preserving the rest of the content in the image. Here you can see a few more examples of such edits. In addition, our method can be applied to real-world videos. text to live is driven solely from text and does not require any user-provided masks. Notice the accurate localization of the cake or of the giraffe neck and the photorealistic textures. Recently, we've seen amazing breakthroughs in the generative AI. Users can generate mind-blowing images with simple text prompts. And we've also seen some really cool editing results of works that use clip in combination with a pre-trained image generator. However, these method, the methods are not designed for editing real-world images and exhibit an inherent trade-off between maintaining fidelity to the original content and fidelity to the desired edit. So, some large-scale models have been adapted for in painting, but still, if, even if you provide this image of birds with very tight masks and ask these methods to generate golden birds, they will generate some nice birds instead of editing the existing ones. Other works that do not require user masks struggle to perform localized edits without changing irrelevant content. So unlike the other methods, we do not rely on a pre-trained generator or on user-provided masks. Our method successfully performs localized edits of existing objects and also extends to video, which is very challenging by itself. And it is unclear whether other methods can even be applicable there. So our approach is to train a lightweight, lightweight generator on a single image text pair and to use clip as an external prior to establish our losses. We create an internal dataset by applying various augmentations to the input pair, all of which are used to train our generator. So image augmentations include cropping, flipping, and color jittering, while text augmentations are randomly sampled from a set of text templates. And training on this diverse set of examples serves as a strong regularization and allows us to avoid adversarial solutions. Rather than directly predicting the edited image, our key idea is to generate an RGBA edit layer, color and opacity, which is then composited over the original image. This allows us to better control the localization and the generated content by applying novel losses, both on the final composite and on the edit layer itself. Specifically, our driving loss is the composition loss, which encourages similarity between the target text and the composited image in clip embedding space. In addition, we apply a structure preservation loss. Our structure loss is defined as self-similarity loss in clip feature space. So clip is based on the VIT architecture, which processes tokens that correspond to the patches in the original image. So we extract these tokens and construct a self-similarity matrix, which measures the cosine similarity between each pair of tokens. This matrix uh, can serve the structural representation of the image, so we want the self-similarity of the output image to match the one of the input. And also intuitively, defining this loss in the clip space provides additional constraints to the resulting representation of the output image. For direct supervision on the edit layer, we draw inspiration from chroma keying, a technique widely used in image and video post-production. And in fact, you can actually find almost anything if you search for it over a green screen in the internet. So our idea is to composite the edit layer over a green screen background and encourage it to match a specific text template in clip space. For example, fire over a green screen. And a nice property of this loss is that it allows to us to control the generated content and provides intuitive supervision on the desired effect. For example, when generated semi-transparent effects, this loss allows us to focus on the smoke without changing the image content by matching the text, smoke over a green screen. 
To achieve better localization, we use a transformer explainability method to automatically extract a rough relevancy map to a text, in this example, hat. We then use, this, use it to bootstrap our predicted alpha map. And notice that our model dramatically refines the initial heat map during training. So let's see some more results. As you can see, text to live synthesizes complex semi-transparent effects. For example, notice the fire effect and the realistic composition with the car. Text to live can also change the textures or materials or objects in a semantically aware manner. It localizes the object of interest without relying on a user provided mask and preserve the original content. And we can also edit the image in a more global manner. Okay. So now uh, we wondered, can we extend this method to real world videos? So let's first take a look at an AVE approach where we would train our generator as just as before on the collection of all video frames. And as expected, the result lacks temporal consistency since we're treating the video as a bag of just independent images. So in order to overcome this issue, we use our recent work of layered neural atlases that decomposes a video into a set of 2D atlases. Each atlas can be treated as a unified 2D image that represents the entire foreground or background throughout the video. Now, each video location is mapped to the atlases. Each, uh, each one gives us the corresponding RGB color. Additionally, each video location is assigned with an opacity value, which states how much is observed from the foreground in the specific location. Now, this representation allows us to reconstruct the video using alpha blending. And everything is trained in self-supervised manner, but we won't go uh, into detail. Now, a key feature of this representation is that editing a video is reduced to editing a 2D atlas image, which can be done, for example, using Photoshop. And then the edits are automatically mapped back to the entire video. That way, we achieve temporal consistency with minimal effort. Now, our goal in text to live is to apply such edits completely automatically using text alone. And specifically, we, tre we treat a pre-trained Atlas model as a video renderer. So similarly to the image case, we train a, sorry, a generator um, on an input image text pair. But here, our input to the generator is an Atlas image rather than a natural image. And so our generator predicts an atlas edit layer. Now, an AVE approach to train this would be to just apply our losses directly on the atlas. But instead, we map the edit back to uh, frames using the pre-trained atlas model and apply our losses directly on those frames. This not only gives us a natural looking images, but it also allows us to exploit the richness of the video by rendering multiple different viewpoints during training. So we see that in order to edit a video, all we need is to train our generator using the pre-computed Atlas representation. So looking at the results, we see that text to live achieves temporally consistent edits and synthesizes photorealistic textures. It does it in a semantically aware manner. For example, the beak of the swan in the top row. It also automatically localizes the region of interest. For instance, in the edits in the upper row, where we edit only the dress of the woman. In addition, it manages to augment the scene with semi-transparent effects, such as fog in Foggy Park. And as far as we know, we're the first to show these types of edits on real-world videos. Another thing to note is that our method can be applied both on the foreground and background of the scene, which can give us really cool results, such as this one. So since we explicitly aim to preserve structure, our method is not designed to significantly deviate from the original layout and to create new objects. For example, the chess pieces. So in this work, we saw how we can effectively combine the semantic power of clip together with an internal learning approach. And this allowed us to achieve high quality edits even without any generative prior. 
So with all the amazing generation capabilities of models like Stable Diffusion, we asked ourselves how can we leverage them in our frameworks. So I won't get into the details, but here are some cool edit results, and stay tuned. Thank you for listening, and please visit our website for more results and code. Thank you. Thank you for a cool talk.